everybody. It's Tyler here at the Las Vegas Regional. Check in with 7426 Paradise Robotics. Been looking phenomenal this year. They got two events on their belts. Really far runs on each one of those. And congratulations so far. But I know looking for big things here at Las Vegas as they try to qualify for the World Championships. It's coming all so close. Let's look at Paradise, what they offer. We're going to be talking about some, some of the different iterations they've been doing on their robot. Of course, we're going through a really cool elevator. Uh, able to do some other great things as well with their over-the-bumper intake. So let's break into this robot a bit more, dive in, and learn about them here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Otto, let's start to break down the mechanical features of this robot here. Talk to me about your uh, elevator, and then we're going to be going into some of your different iterations you've been doing too. Uh, yeah, so as you can see, the primary uh, mechanism of our robot is a lateral elevator uh, around a pivoting shaft. So it's kind of like a uh, unqualified Quokka's style robot with the integrated uh, intake and shooter, but uh, we wanted to really package that a lot better. We wanted to be able to stow within our frame perimeter, uh, keep a low CG, and uh, we wanted to be able to reach over the bumpers while keeping those same kind of benefits of an under the bumper uh, shooter. And Olin, if you wanna uh, do the, yeah. So this is our amp shot. So pivot the whole thing up and our elevator here holds it in the right position. That also allows us to reach over the bumpers to pick up note. Uh, if you want to go to the floor intake, like that. So that is us fully extended out uh, to the floor. Uh, that's how we intake. Uh, we used to uh, pick up from the source as well, but we determined that it was kind of just faster and easier to pick up from the floor uh, like that. So, so from a strategy them. standpoint, that didn't really change anything on your robot, right? You just said, hey, this is quicker to pick up from the floor sort of thing? Yeah, correct. Cool. Um, a couple other things I want to talk about as we look at like what changes were made to your robot. Can you dive in a bit more of what we've seen since you've been at Utah as well, uh, coming here into Las Vegas? What changes have you made? Uh, yeah, even before Utah, we went through a whole uh, first revision robot. Sure. So originally, uh, if you want to bring it back up to idle. So uh, if you look at our uh, shooter manipulator here. So originally it was like twice this size and we had a dedicated motor for a uh, cure. So it'd be intake to cure to shooter. Uh, we realized that was kind of just inefficient and we could have the queuing segment just be integrated with the intake like that. Um, additionally, uh, before that we realized uh, we had a really big issue with programming. We could not uh, get our PIDs tuned very well. It had a lot of backlash, and that's because we were on a live axle setup for our arm. Uh, I don't have it with us, but uh, we took a half inch steel shaft and twisted it like 20 degrees. Wow. Uh, because with having that whole extra uh, intake setup, the extra motors, all that full size Neos, uh, we had a lot of weight, a lot of torque going through that shaft, and it twisted it right up. Um, and then, so, one of the big issues that we ended up having at Utah was uh, in our playoffs matches, we actually ended up having lateral play issues on our elevator. So when we would go to the floor or go to score amp, our elevator would move side to side a lot. and what ended up happening was our bearings would pop out of their blocks and we'd end up browning out because we were drawing so much current just trying to move the elevator around. And uh, it, it, it was really scary there out on the field seeing the elevator just not move. Um, so as you can see right here, uh, so we implemented this uh, extra block here along our elevator rail and what that allows us to do is A, we have these uh, zip ties as a redundancy integrated within that plate, um, as well as it, this whole section here just wasn't there. 
So it's an extra stability piece, uh, kind of like a retainer. So the inside bearings on that elevator aren't popping out and moving uh, whenever we take some lateral play. Something I ask you about looking at this uh, intake design, I'd love to hear a little bit more about this. Uh, hugely about intake, one of the things I really do like about your team, it seems like you really just have a lot of control with the notes on the field as well uh -huh. too. So talking about what's gone into this, uh, when you're looking at an over the bumper intake, that sort of thing, we're in kind of the priority queue was having a super wide intake and having the effectiveness that you have. Uh, yeah, of course. So. Uh, we have these uh, 3D printed channeling pieces right here, so if we do pick up a note that is off-center, we can just, it passively slides it back in. And you'll notice one of the bigger differences, uh, Olin, if you want to go to the ground intake, so you feed it right in. And uh, actually, this is something that we implemented at Utah uh, on our practice day, was our bean break. So, before Utah and even on practice day, we ended up having a lot of issues where our intake felt too manual at times. So we'd pick up a note and it would be touching our top rollers and we'd go for a shot and it kind of just a little doopy shot. Uh, it goes like five feet, doesn't really go anywhere. We got no power, no compression because the rollers couldn't rev up to speed. So uh, actually shout out to Upper Creek. They were kind enough to donate that piece for us and we paid them back eventually. But at Utah, we actually implemented that uh, so that we help. We have a lot more control over the note. Uh, you'll also notice a difference in material on our top and bottom rollers. So our bottom roller is some uh, rubber tubing stretched over a polycarb pipe. Uh, and our top roller is actually just some electrical tape. We did that so that the note kind of gets a little kick up from the extra grip on the bottom, and it helps feed into our whole system uh, just way smoother, a lot better. When we were talking earlier, uh, you mentioned that you're doing something a little bit different with how your can setup is on it. Uh, so uh, yeah. walk me through uh, what that what that is, what makes it a little bit different, and one like why'd you go that route, I guess, would be an uh, interesting yeah, of course. question. Uh, amp and disable? All right. Yeah, so as you can see here, uh, this is a pretty unique uh, way that we handle our can solution. So, uh, a big part of our team is our advanced manufacturing program at school, and it teaches you a lot about uh, like electricity, about circuits, and one of the big things that you go over in the very beginning is you go over parallel circuits. And so, last year in 2023, we, during, I think it was Arizona West, we were knocked out of, I think, three or four qualifying matches because we had a can issue. And because we were running our can in series, daisy chaining each device off of one another, uh, we spent the entire time just tracing where that uh, one faulty component was. And so what this allows us to do is uh, it's kind of a redundancy. So if one piece, if one component is not properly functioning, we don't lose the whole robot. Uh, it makes it way easier to troubleshoot because you know exactly what's going wrong. Um, and on top of that, it makes our organization really clean. You don't have can wires going everywhere. They all lead back to one place. Uh, so we actually have doubled up can wires on our swerve modules, but those are still all in series because another thing we learned from our revision one was that we were taking up too much space, having absolutely everything in parallel. We actually had two sets of these uh, can parallel blocks and it was just way too much space that we decided we needed for other real estate. We got to bring in Olin here to talk uh, more about on your programming side of things as well too. So let's bring him in and talk about what you're doing for autonomous modes as well. And then when we were talking earlier, a lot of future plans as well too that you're looking at doing. Yeah. Hopefully qualifying for world championships here. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about what your autonomous is when we bring that up on screen. And then uh, should you qualify for championships, what future plans is your team going to implement for programming? Yeah, sure thing. So our autonomous is uh, currently running off of Path Planner. Um, so that's software that we haven't touched as a team yet. And I believe it came out in around 2018 to 2019-ish but we just have never gotten around to it until this year since our programming has been able to step up a lot higher. And so um, we've been spending a lot of time this season just getting to learn all the ins and outs of the software. And this is actually our current 5 note right now. Um, and so it's just kind of, it's, a, it's software that lets you just go through um, with paths that you create separately and it'll let you uh, execute different commands throughout sequentially uh, between the paths and you can also 
um, execute them within the paths through things called event markers. And so learning how we wanted to work with this has just been, um, it's been a very long ride, but we've gotten somewhere to where we have a good flow with it and we're very happy with where we've ended out. And this right now is our current, currently our most, um, our most successful autonomous. And so um, we have it separated into each path that we want to go to. Um, you can go like immediately through all the paths within like, you can go to each waypoint in one path if you really wanted to, but uh, for organization purposes, I just, I think it's a lot nicer to, I mean, we, we have them as nicely organized as possible where we'll go right into one of our, and this one's called Do Not Use. That was just because we named that because we didn't want to use it, but then uh, it started working really well. So now it's just like, it's a lucky charm. Nice. Um, a lot of our names are kind of just for funsies. But it, I think we, we, we think it keeps the organization very nice to just split them up path by path. There's some quirks that we think might be introduced by that, but it's something we're gonna have to look into a little later, but it's working pretty good for us for now. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much the basics of our autonomous. Um, so far, we've been able to pick up the pace very well, and we're very happy with that so far. So take a moment, walk me through uh, those future plans should Paradise uh, qualify. We hope you do, but should that qualify, what are kind of some immediate things that you want to start to tackle from programming? So should we qualify, um, a, a big uh, step forward for us would be to um, be able to work with uh, our vision a lot more. So. I mean, for instance, this limelight right here on our robot isn't currently doing very much. It's kind of just a glorified camera right now um, because we have code right now that can center our drive to the April tag on the field um, for the speaker, but we're not really using that because our drivers currently are just doing a much better job at it than it is. And so um, it's just something that we haven't been able to invest too much time in yet, but that's I think it's going to make a big difference if we're going to be able to start getting good odometry in and uh, being able to... Um, auto angle our arm uh, to a certain degree given that that's mechanically sound but um, that's going to be a big help coming up and along with that I we still have a lot more to learn with PID tuning um, on our robot specifically uh, with the arm since it's since the uh, center of gravity is changing constantly for our elevator um, just depending on wherever its arm is it's really difficult to accurately tune for every point we want to get to. So we have to kind of use rough approximations for some of the values. And I mean, as you can see, when I enable it right here, it's going to be a little bit shaky. And uh, let me get it back down. It's a little shaky right now, and that's because we upped the speed a little bit, but it's um, fighting it to a position and it just doesn't have the right configuration to do that accurately. And so that's something that we, we strive to have a really nice smooth robot, and that's something that we kind of um, are going to be prioritizing, say we qualify for a chance, but even during the off season, just to further our programming. Well, overall, the robot looks really smooth, so we hope we get the rest of that programming stuff down as well, too. But yeah. Paradise Robotics, good luck here at the Las Vegas Regional. We do hope you qualify. We can't wait to see how you do. But thanks for taking time. Tell us more about your robot machine. you got a great robot this year, and good luck the rest of the way. Thanks Thank you very lot. much. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.